think we have something really special because here we are it is a doxa 8 day uh, dashboard movement from 1908 from a, a serious collector this is a normal a fairly sized uh, pocket watch and this is a watch for uh, a dashboard and it was used uh, on cars uh, early in century, the last century, uh, but all, uh, a uh, cockpit of small planes as well. Uh, I can uh, tell you that it's a beautiful uh, movement. Uh, for my own collection um, I have a Waltham A Days and this one. And I just found uh, a dial. Well, I am from Holland, and maybe you can see it is the dial from a uh, dashboard clock, and maybe you can see it's from Spiker. That is a Dutch uh, car brand. Um, old but uh, revived so uh, it's uh, I think it's still a car brand and I believe it's the first four-wheel driven car um, ever produced from Spiker so I really love this old dial from a, a Spiker car Spiker means nail in Dutch not really a sexy name but still sexy cars <laughs> here is a beautiful book about dashboards and you'll be amazed uh, how the design of wristwatches uh, is closely linked to uh, the taste of dashboards uh, through the ages and I just found here this is a good example of how an, a dashboard clock was fitted and now you can see the crown just sticks out the dashboard and then you can see the decentralized the sub second is just a, a pocket watch being reversed so with dashboard clocks usually uh, the sub second is at 12 o'clock and not uh, 6 o'clock. This is from a Rolls Royce. Uh, this Doxa is uh, the same were fitted in uh, Bugattis. And as you can see in a moment, it is um, a high quality movement. I started as a watchmaker some time ago when I had hair, had hair uh, because the the clock of my rover uh, I own a rover P5B from 1969 and uh, oh, the clock was broken the clock from the dashboard and I went to a watchmaker and he laughed at me uh, well it's not a watch what are you doing here uh, he was quite rude and um, I went to a clockmaker and he said, well, it's, it's a car clock, I'm not going to work on that. Uh, so I did it myself, I did my homework. Uh, I went to the Dutch watchmaking school and uh, I repaired the clock myself. Uh, it's still ticking in, in my rover, still on the rover. I bought it for my 30th birthday, so I uh, own it for almost 20 years. So through uh, dashboard clocks, uh, I entered the world of uh, watchmaking. It's an eight-day movement, and uh, you can do. A, a, there's se se several solutions for that. Um, a huge barrel, or use uh, an extra gear in the gear train. So uh, yeah, would love to know to find out. The crystal is missing, 
uh, but we have a huge collection of um, pocket watch crystals and even bigger. Um, this is right in between a very large pocket watch and a small uh, barometer. Uh, they got the same curved uh, crystals as well. It's an uh, enamel dial, 1908, with uh, the blued hands. So first I'm going to remove the hands, just to make sure they are safe. And then uh, I open the case back and we'll have a look. And I use these white ones because I want to have a bigger surface. So I'm not pressing the enamel on just one place so it can crack. So with the wider surface, um, I love to use these on delicate enamel uh, watch dials uh, of pocket watches for instance. Uh, first thing I always check if the middle of the hole is in the middle of the pivots. Oh. <laughs> I was looking for the sub-second on the 6 o'clock position but it's a uh, dashboard clock so I have to look over here. And here you can see that the the dial is slightly twisted because the pivot is not really in the center so uh, that needs a bit more uh, attention. Well, there's the ring. Uh, I'll leave it on because I have to open it from the back so it's got some support and a soft cushion. I always love that the uh, uh, case is from the same producer as the movement, so that's a good thing. I think that's a, a, a schmutz of polish from on the inside. There, the second case back. Beautiful perlage. And here the movement on a cushion. And I think this is just beautiful. Here we have to have a close look uh, under the microscope what that is. I just love the elegance of the click spring. And here of the wave between this bridge and the gear train bridge. Beautiful. 15 joules. Lovely elegant bridge for the escape wheel. And I think we'll find a temperature compensated balance wheel. I was really looking forward to this movement. Hey, this is for me a first. Um, I said in uh, the previous clip about uh, timing and uh, uh, balance spring that it was advance uh, uh, arrêt et retard, but it should be avance et retard. I think uh, Thomas uh, uh, pointed it out. Well, I stand corrected. I never seen N and V. Has anybody got an idea where it comes from? Well, this is slow and fast. But this I really don't know. It's the first time ever I seen it. Um, somebody mentioned a no shock system in a race car. That was really a problem. <laughs> really was. And here you can see the beautiful temperature compensated balance wheel. Then we have steel on the inside, brass on the outside. And if you're interested in uh, how a watch works, 
Uh, then you can find me spinning on, uh, oh, even on the, the balance wheel episode. You can see me on uh, spinning and uh, showing how the temperature compensated balance wheel works. I'm not sure. Oh, Grille, Nach and Voor in German. Yeah. V excellent. Well, I learned something tonight. <laughs> it is so well made, isn't it? And you can see in, uh, this is something we have to see, but you can see the beautiful patterns of the Geneva stripes. Fish and chips again, yeah. It is dirty though. First, the obvious check. The balance staff is still okay, luckily. Uh, I'm going to remove the winding stem with that one. The case screws first. See if I can wiggle about to give the winding stem a bit more space because I'm not going to force uh, anything out. No chance. Ratchet wheel screw because this is an A day movement. I don't want to take any chances with the spring because it is a huge spring. There's the ratchet wheel. An alternative way because I don't want to stress the winding stem too much and with the normal screw it doesn't come out so it is just like a pocket watch I'm going to remove the dial first because the dial can uh, come out with the movement in place and then I can simply see what is holding the uh, winding stem instead of just yanking it out <laughs> We're not going to do that. No stress, no panic. And there is the beautiful dial feet. Uh, dial. There we are. Beautiful dial. And there you can see the tip of the dial feet was slightly bent. So uh, I couldn't get it out. And this debris needs more attention. It is, well, this is the 12 o'clock position. That is the 6 o'clock position. And we need to find out what is causing that. But now we can see what is retaining the winding stem because we release as usual the setting lever spring screw and the small screw in the there released the small screw in the pendant and the winding stem screw is in the top position so the setting lever should come up let's have a closer look at the dial side of the movement because it is intriguing